hello everyone again and welcome to my channel so excited to be back again and talk to you about reflection which is a type of asymmetry operation which we talked about on our previous video our previous video we talked a little bit about rotations which is actually a symmetry operation and its symmetry element was actually the axis now in this particular case where we talk about reflection which is a type of a symmetry operation each symmetry element is actually the mirror plane or mirror image in this particular case so this reflection actually has a symbol which is called this sigma in here in various objects we notice that objects they do have parts of its image where you have a mirror part with respect to another in our previous video we talked about the human body let's just say this particular shape mainly the face we notice from head to toe we have a symmetry or that is actually aligned at the middle where one side is actually a mirror image to the other side and no matter how well you position it they are non superimposable with respect to each other one left which is the other and the other one on the right over here now looking at how this is reflected on various compounds we are going to start off first with this particular object in here now this object i know everyone is playing around with it but hey this actually has a symmetry which is the mirror plane and the mirror plane first of all from our previous video we talked about the axis of rotation which is passing through the middle here and once you put that in here we notice that hey there is a c3 rotation in here so this c3 enables it to actually rotate in its maximum symmetry operation which is with respect to the rotation but in here we also have a plane that is actually containing this principal axis over here and this passes through this particular ends or the blades over here where we have one that is actually aligned in this particular manner as i'm going to show you in here and it contains this particular axis and we have another one containing this particular axis and the last one over here which is this mirror plane which is containing this axis this particular type of mirror plane is actually called the sigma with the v in here why do i say v because this is vertical and vertical shows that oh it's actually containing the axis and if we have in another case scenario which is sigma h uh, sigma h is a mirror plane that is actually perpendicular to this principal axis so if it's passing through the bonds in here this is a mirror plane and it's going through this particular blade over here what we realize is that this plane over here the top and the bottom are both identical and it's actually perpendicular to the principal axis so this particular plane when it's placed here which is parallel to this particular object here it's actually the sigma h and lastly we have sigma d which is a dihedral plane and what does it mean to be dihedral what that means is that you are actually between atoms between two atoms or a couple of atoms where one is the same number with respect to another and you're not actually passing through any particular atom in here so an example of it will be something like this where we have this compound where if you have this bond here at this particular region and we have our principal axis in here what we notice is that hey we do have a mirror plane which is actually positioned in this particular manner where it's not actually touching this bond and the other bond which is this one over here so while this is a sigma d this one over here is actually a sigma v because sigma v cuts through this bond and it actually cuts it into half where one is actually a mirror plane with image with respect to the other image while in this case here which is a sigma d it's actually dihedral and it's actually a mirror image of this with respect to the other one over there so why sigma d doesn't pass through bonds sigma v passes through bonds there's no sigma h in this particular compound but we have a sigma v and we have a sigma d 
in this particular compound over there. Now, let's look at a specific example in here where we're going to be looking at Zenian fluoride, where we have like fluorine atoms, and where on the other side we'll compare that with sulfoxide fluoride in here, and we're going to see some interesting differences between this and that over there. Let's make this six. Our molecular structure of this compound is actually two in here that are actually axial and we have four that are actually equatorial in here. I made my mistake. I made a mistake with this particular drawing. She did she did over there. And while on this other part here we have sulfur in the middle and we have oxygen up here now we have fluorine here, a fluorine atom here, a fluorine atom here, and a fluorine atom here. So why are the things that are kind of similar in here? In here we have uh, axis of rotation which is actually going through this particular fluorine here. Uh, while we are rotating this we have a C4 rotation where if I rotate at 90 degrees I get the same thing in here while on the other side here we have a C4 rotation as well which is actually makes us realize that hey if I position it this way I rotate it 90 degrees with to each other and I'll still get the same thing which passes through here and over there now one important difference is is that we don't have a sigma H in one particular compound in here where on this part here we have a sigma H because the plane is actually perpendicular to this particular axis of rotation and is passing through this particular fluorine atoms here and what we realize is that our sigma H in here is actually present here because the top is the same as the bottom because we have fluorine at the top and we have fluorine at the bottom in here however there is no double bonded oxygen in here so there is no sigma H in this particular molecule because there is no mirror at the top and at the bottom because of the absence of oxygen that is attached to the sulfur at the bottom in here. Now on the other part we do have other planes that are actually present. We have planes that are passing through the fluorine atoms that are actually two. We have one here and we have one here. If you are passing through a bond then you are considered to be a sigma V and why if you're passing dihedrally between bond between atoms in here which are in this case two atoms each in here one here and one here then you are actually considered to be a sigma D similarly we have that in here we have this and that both of them here are actually sigma V and why on the other side we have one that is actually between these two fluorines and the other one here both of them in here these and that are actually sigma d so that's about it for the first video i hope you're able to understand the differences between the sigma v sigma h and the sigma d plane that are actually used to actually identify the mirror images in various molecules and also objects all the same thanks for watching Please hit the comment down below, let me hear your thoughts, hit the like, share and subscribe and see you next time. Stay smart.